I think you have to behave like a winner, you have to behave like a champion for years before it becomes true. The Ten Commandments Wealth went live on Easter Sunday. And thousands of other people that made a commitment to a brighter future, to more prosperity, to brighter ways and better days. If you want to see the rest of this interview with this champion and many others, do yourself a favor. Click that link. I'll see you inside the Ten Commandments Wealth. It's right over there. Click that link. Bunny, what should you do? Click the link right there. Do it now. Today I'm chatting with Johanna Champion. And I can't pronounce your last name, but I am also have a Polish name, and nobody can pronounce mine either. So, Jędrzejczyk and Buczkowski, Buczkowski and Jędrzejczyk. Now we have it. <laughs> Johanna, you're a five-time champion in kickboxing, Muay Thai, Muay Thai kickboxing, yeah. not kickboxing, kickboxing. And then, uh, and a silver in there too, I saw. And five-time gold, and then six-time champion at UFC, huh? You, you were like- Yeah, I won the belt and I defended five times. And yeah, actually, I think I was six times Muay Thai world champion or kickboxing because it was uh, depends on this on the country I was fighting in. Because, uh, for example, in Japan, elbows are not allowed, mm. are illegal. So it was more like kickboxing than Muay Thai because Muay Thai, you know, mm. you use your elbows, you use your knees to the head. And I think in Japan, you can't pull the head and, and knee. Uh, so yes, yeah, so six times, so like whatever, fun. like, you in know. Japan, <laughs> yeah. And five times European champion, but yeah, it's good. But I think the most important is the, the UFC trophy. For sure, for so, sure. Yeah. Nobody's, uh, you know, you, you've been the most dominant person in your weight class and arguably what, you know, you're the best female champion that- uh, Thank you, know, you. The girls are scared to fight you, I see the, I see how they are when the, they the, were. The, yeah, actually, actually, though, yeah. <laughs> they were. They are not scared anymore. I know you're very. But I was dominant. I was dominant because I was chasing my dreams so much, and I couldn't. I couldn't let it go. So I was like chasing. You know, I was so mean. The good way. I mean, the good way. Uh, yes, I was chasing, and I was doing my best. And this is what I do every day. I do my best every single day. I think something that would be really interesting to, to chat about with them is I, I interviewed Riddick Bo, great guy, I like Riddick Bo, very nice man. And Riddick, he'd say, he was boxing champion, maybe you probably yeah. know who he is, but he, he had like 45 fights and only lost once. And the man he lost to, Evander Holyfield, he fought three times, so he won two out of three. And, um, you know, Riddick, he, uh, a, a problem that he talked about is he said, you know, he thought so much, like, I'm going to be the champ. I'm gonna be the champ. He got a silver medal in the Olympics, and he wanted to be the heavyweight boxing champion of the world. He got all four belts. He's the first man to get all yeah. four belts. That's beautiful. But he said, after he got the champion, after he became champion, he didn't have the goal after that. He didn't have that, I'm gonna keep the belt, I'm gonna keep the, I'm gonna stay champion. Yeah. And he, you know, he said that thought, that change in his psychology from I'm gonna become the champion, I'm gonna become the champion, that after he had it, he lost it very soon. And you know, you're clearly a person who you, yeah. you wanted to earn that and keep that spot for. Yeah, it's hard to say stop, but I, you know, people might forget it. But I defended my title five times, you know, and I know that there is so many people they know who I am and how dominant I was because since I lost the belt uh, in November 2017 to Rose Namayunas, uh, the belt is changing the the owner, you know, so Rose. Uh, won with me, then she lost with uh, Andreas, then uh, Wally Zhang won, then Rose won, blah, blah, blah. So I hold the belt for such a long time, and these girls, in the same period of time, were like uh, giving the belt to each other, <laughs> you know what I mean? But it's definitely harder to defending the belt than, than winning the belt, you know? But because it's all staying about staying focused, but uh, I feel like I have lost my focus. Uh, and, uh, but it's just harder, you know? But what I heard, I spoke with my uh, friend uh, who, who is multiple BJJ World Champion, Jezari Matuda, uh, and she told me that she spoke with some psychologist and she told her that uh, it's normal that uh, when you chase your dreams and you reach your goals, it's normal that sometimes you have to change the patch. You, you are not going to defend your belt. You just, your body 
is filled with it and you have to change the patch and ch chase something, something different. This is how we are made. Humans are made like this, you know. So we, we can't stop searching for some new patches, new things, and just chase it as much as we can. Uh, on Sunday, a few days ago, Kamaro Usman was here with yeah. me you know, in this room, in that chair, same room. I flew back to Chicago and came back since then, but same room Beautiful. again. Beautiful, yeah. <laughs> and um, you know, right, right now he is a six-time defending champion. Yeah. So Beautiful. Um, and he, t he talked about that, which I, I didn't expect him to say really, but and you know, I, I wouldn't, if he didn't say it on camera, I would never say it myself. I, I'd keep a private conversation private, but... Um, you know, there, there's a, a fatigue that sets in that when uh, we said, you know, six-time champion, I said, you know, Andy's going to get six more. And he's like, oh, I don't know about that. That there's yeah. kind of looking for the next thing of, you know, as you yeah. were saying, but changing yeah. that path or... People watching you, you know, when you becoming the champ, there's so many people watching you, your every step, every move. And so this is what Amanda Nunes said about uh, after she won with uh, Ronda Rosie, she said that she was not preparing to fight Ronda Rosie. She was not preparing three months only because we usually uh, do camps for like six, eight, 12 weeks, sometimes more. So she said she was not training six, eight or 12 weeks only. She was preparing her whole life to become the champ, to uh, dethrone her and win the belt. and and. It's hard. That's why it's so hard, you know. Yeah. But I wish Usman all the best. Uh, he, he he's so good, you know. He's such a great athlete. He is a very nice man. Yeah. I, you know, I, I didn't know his personality very well. It was the first time that we met. I knew. Actually, we hung out very nice man. together at the international fight week a few years ago here in Vegas. We had so much fun. He's such a smart and and cool guy to hang out and talk. We had mutual friends that neither of us knew. So I, I have a, a friend that I've known like 20 years that was on the oh, Olympic nice. team with him in 2012. And uh, they were training together for U.S. Olympic wrestling. And then we have uh, you know, Rashad Evans and someone else yeah, that yeah. we knew in common that he has a close relationship with Rashad. Yeah. And I've known Rashad for more they than They were trained together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, very nice man. I had a conversation like this with Kerry Walsh. And, you know, Kerry's a volleyball champion. Yeah. Kerry had you know, three gold medals, one bronze medal. Yeah. She became a friend over time. We've, we've done several things together. Very nice lady, but also a very fierce competitor inside. You know, And at one time, Kerry had won 112 matches in a row, which it's sounds like it can't be true, but 112 No life, times, no personal life. 112 yeah. matches in a row, not with like bums on the beach, yeah. beach volleyball, but like the other professional, yeah, yeah. the best players in the world. And she talked about this is that... Uh, you know, when, when you're playing that good, like other people, they're watching your tapes. Same would be happening yep. to you. Like, you know, your, your competition is your watching your videos. Yeah. They're watching. Yeah. They, they have not just them, but their coaches, their trainers yeah. are breaking down. How do you move? What, are, yeah. you know, what do you do in certain contexts, et cetera? And, um, you know, so you have that, you have people looking at you that way and trying to copy what you do yeah. and, you know, build strategies against what you do. Then in addition to that, uh, she said on the, on the day that she lost, she said earlier that day, she spoke to another man who's an extraordinary, you know, male beach volleyball person, and she said, "You know, do you ever get tired of winning?" And he's like, "Oh," he's like, and as soon as you have that thought, you're going to lose. And that's the day that she broke that. You know, she said that she was pretty pissed about breaking her streak, and then mm -hmm. she started a new streak of dozens of wins in a row. But she said, as soon as she let that thought creep into her head, that she was hey, that's interesting. From winning. You know? That's interesting, but no. I was not, I was scared of losing because that time I was not used to losing, you know. I did like 100 Muay Thai fights and I lost maybe two. They made me lose like five fights, you know, but I, for example, I fought in Turkey on Belarus and they, they stole the win from me. But uh, yeah, it was hard. I was more scared to lose, but you have to have this feeling before every competition, you know. So you you know the value of winning, you know the value of 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 competition. Yeah, but it's hard. But it's it's very nice what you said. I will think about more. There's, there's many times in my life, I'm curious your take on this, but a lot of things that I've been successful at, I already had the thought in my head, like, of course I'm going yeah. to do that. Like in my head it was already done, like of course I'm yeah. going to do that. You can't be scared of, of it, you know. And then I had to build in the behaviors in the background to, yeah. to make that become yes, true. Of know? course. 
I think you have to behave like a winner. You have to behave like a champion. For you, you don't get the bell to accidentally, and now you're a champion. Yeah. But when you have a, a goal that's important or so many people want, is you have to behave that way for years before it becomes true. You have to feel <laughs> special inside, you know, uh, because there is so many people. They're gonna tell you you can't do it. Uh, you will not do it, but you have to believe in it that you you can do it, and you just you just follow it, you know. And you do your best. What was your training schedule like over the years? To you know, you've been doing this for an awful long time. When did you start martial arts? Oh, crazy! I started when I was sixteen, and I'm eighteen right now. <laughs> <laughs> Thirty-five this year, man! I've been doing this for the last eighteen years. But I started when I was sixteen, and that that time, I, I, I was not even thinking about being professional athlete. Athlete, you know, I was. A chubby girl, and I started doing Muay Thai because I wanted to lose some some few pounds, you know. And I fell in love, and I didn't fall in love with punching people or letting my aggression go. I fell in love with breaking my own limits, you know. That it was all up to me if I was going to be better uh, with every training. So I was training twice a week. Three months uh, after I started training, I was training more and more. So now when I'm preparing for my UFC fights, uh, very often I do from 8 to 13 trainings a week. And usually it takes, uh, like I said, minimum is six weeks, but usually it takes from 8 to 12 weeks to prepare uh, for one fight. Yeah, it's crazy. But I started traveling since I was 18. I used to live in Thailand because of Muay Thai. Mm -hmm. And in Holland, I used to be under Ernesto Hust, who was a K1 world champion a few times, Mr. Perfect. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, I used to live in so many countries. But this is what made me, I, I used to learn from different people, different champions, different masters. I met so many people and I could uh, take something from each person I met in my life, you know? I, I just talked about this yesterday with clients on one of my mentoring calls yeah. that, um, you know, I've been working on boxing a lot with Pauli Malinacci, he's yeah. a multi-time champion, yeah. two different weight divisions. And, you know, when Pauli and I will be training, some he, he'll tell me something like, you know, Lennox Lewis told me, you know, do this this way, or uh, Shane Mosley told me do it this way. And the, those little sound bites like that, that, you know, for him, that's just, he's sharing part of his life experience, but, you know, he's learned those things from other world champions yep. that came before him. And they learned those things back through, you know, you know Muhammad Ali and Joe Lewis and you know, uh, George Foreman and Tyson and so on and so on. And, you know, people that are performing at a high level that I'll, I'll continue saying the word champion because it's true in the case of you and him. You know, you're, to, to be a high level performer, you have to be around other people that were high level performers. That when, you, when you're associating with those people and learning from people that um, or you know, the top people before you, you're, you're not just learning from your coach or your trainer, you're learning from you know, hundreds, little pieces, the best knowledge from hundreds of people that were top performers. Well, of course, you're a successful man, so you know, you can't stay around negative people, you know? You, no. have, to, you have to stay around people who, who are better so you can chase them or you can get motivated. Since I was a little girl and when I was broke, People with money were my motivation, not because of they had money, and uh, like it's all about that. I, I I felt that they made it. I can do it. So if I work my ass hard enough, I can be at the top, like they are, and I can be better one day. So yeah, you you write about that's it's very important, you know. If we if we make our patch, you know, like people who are like saying like, you go to the best, you're not gonna get better, you know? You need people who are going to push you to do bigger things and, and get, you, get you out of your comfort zone. The, the other side of that, a, a person out there who, you know, you're, they're, learning, uh, they're learning Muay Thai or they're learning about finance or entrepreneurship <laughs> from like the, the guy down the street, you know, Bobo or Jimmy or... Yeah. What's a common Polish name? What? Like a man common? name in Polish. I don't know, Jan. Jan. They're learning Johnny. from Jan down the street. <laughs> <laughs> and Jan's got no, a No, we use stand. like a surname. It's Kowalski and Novak. It's like common, you know? Yeah. Novak Kowalski. 
Kowalski down the street's got his pierogi stand. Yes. And he sells quite a few pierogies, so he's going to be your best financial advisor. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Or, or uh, you know, the, the kid in the neighborhood that beat up the other kid in the neighborhood, he's going to be your, your best MMA yeah. coach or something. Yeah. So, you know, you're... The you're point becoming I'm, the, how the, the people you're surrounded the, by, you know? Exactly. The point I'm making is that if you're, if you're learning from other idiots who, you know, their family were probably idiots, the ancestors before you know, them gonna were be probably better. idiots. There's a, there's a lineage of idiot, yeah. idiocy yeah. instead of a, a, a lineage of winning, yeah. of you know, yeah. having champion outcomes. So I think there's a compounding effect in that, that when you have fantastic coaches, fantastic trainers, uh, you're going to have fantastic outcomes yeah. if you put in the work. Yeah. And if you're hanging out with just normal people doing normal things, you're going to have normal outcomes or worse. So I didn't want to be like... My teammates, I respect them and I love them, but I, I'm talking about my f first gym, first days of training, first year of training. This is what I said, like, I always wanted to be better because I was watching them. They gave up so many times. They were like, I'm too tired. I don't want to do another re repetition. I was like, no, I will do more than, than you. And every, uh, with every training, I was doing more and more and I was just getting better and better. And it's very important, it's very important. I was living on my coach's uh, living room on a mattress, you know. I ended up like just bouncing at a bar. I'd been a cop, I quit my job. And... Derek Moneybird presents the 10 Commandments of Wealth. Took, took the gamble on myself to become a successful uh, professional fighter and make it to the UFC or pride in that time. And am I making a sacrifice right now or am I just in investing in a better future? So it's easier for me to do those, to make those decisions when I think about it is like, oh, yeah, absolutely. I, and, I, and now that you mentioned it, that having to actually really process and think about it, I think that word sacrifice is kind of like, I believe it's the word that the ones at the top kind of use to make everyone else feel better about it. Because when you're at the top, now you realize that that was an investment. Was everything just golden and easy and handed to you, or do you have a little struggle with yourself along the way? No. Yeah, and within, uh, in 2013 and 2015, I was living out of my car, you know, full time, and I was too proud to ask for help. Like, how ridiculous is that? You're living out of your car, and think you know it all. And 2015, that's when I kind of hit, I knew that I didn't know it all. So why not find experts in that and really shortcut that? I thought I was going to just chip away. I thought I was just going to read books till I was an expert. Mm -hmm. I never really talked to anyone that actually did it. It's been about a week since I've joined the 10 Commandments of Wealth program and there's so many interviews that are offered in this program. I'm inside the Derek Moneybird 10 Commandments of Wealth program. This is an awesome program that you're gonna love. I'm gonna use the principles and the knowledge from this program to help me boost my leads in my marketing firm. Buy this program, it's a wonderful investment for your future. You won't regret it and you'll absolutely love it.